Welcome back to the Tide Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with another video. This I want to talk to you about the MP46KO of Black Arachnia or Black Widow. And this figure is a nice looking figure. I got it at Show Z. You can get yours there also. I have a link down below. We're going to talk more about this figure coming up. So looking at this box, this is the first KO that has been made with an official box from Takara and so there's questions about how that's even done. But since I made my video saying end of KO, this is the first one because I've been watching every release and they all have brown box special. This is a one to one exact replica. It even has the shiny, look at where it says masterpieces reflective. So it starts to make me wonder, it even has the imprint in here so all the telltale signs of is it an actual uh, KO or official man this is perfect match of official so I'm just gonna leave it at that still calling it a KO so I want to talk to you about this stand and it, it's a it's a good stand it works fine for what it is and what it needs to do and you can move it around but in order to actually put her on this web you actually have to connect the web together four pieces and then you connect this piece to the web, so the stand connector, and then there's another connector that connects to her. So there's a lot to it, and this piece snaps into basically a weapon storage kind of deal. And then with that, that's how it all works and holds together. Thought it was pretty cool. You don't even have to take it off because you can manipulate these legs for standing. And she does have different articulated legs, uh, eight of them <laughs> in this alt mode here. So you can pretty much stand her how you want and yeah, that'll work. Let's get a good look at the paint scheme. These legs, this beautiful copper color and they're, it kind of glistens a bit. So it's got a little like metal fleck to it. And it just looks beautiful. This whole figure just looks great. And so, I mean, Takara did a good job and copying it was a good job unless it's Actually, Takara just sold with a flaw. There is a flaw in it, and I'll, when I, I'll get to that here in just a second. But uh, the head has a little bit of rotation to it. I thought these would have been uh, independently articulated, but they are not. And then looking at the, this shoulder actually kind of came undone a little bit. But anyway, I got some paint up here, and this is very textured. It does have a look and feel of, of a spider. Uh, her foot's kind of showing in this alt mode. And so again, the alt mode probably isn't the greatest alt mode in the world. It's not the greatest looking spider, but it gets the job done for me. It, it, it's kind of creepy looking spider wise. But uh, looking here, this piece back here, the flaw is going to be this hole. So that's where two things connect. And we'll start with one. This is supposed to connect into there. And I mean, I haven't put too much pressure on it because I don't want to break the figure, it's not worth it, but it just doesn't go in. Now, I think it's paint. So it's just excessive amount of paint that's on her and uh, maybe you can scrape that out or you can sand this and the other piece down to where it will work. Either way, that is a bit of a flaw in this figure. So the official, the original, it actually clips in just well, just fine. So not the end of the world to me and I won't really be using that for anything. So we can show you accessories. So this accessory in this mode, she's supposed to be able to plug this into her spot right there. And again, you're gonna see this doesn't really plug in and hold, even though I've been trying for a while, it won't plug in and hold. And I'm not gonna modify it at all. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. That's the only issue that I've found with this figure. Really, I wanna look at some articulation that we have here. And we have each of these legs is on a ball joint and they do easily pop off. As I hear, the original has the same problem. It's a design thing. But if you're careful and gentle with it, it's not going to pop off. You have some articulation right here. And it does feel ratcheted. Maybe that's just me, but it does feel like there's a slight soft ratchet to it. No, that's just friction, I guess. Some of them feel tighter than others, but that's really all the articulation you're going to get. And that's really all you need. I mean, there's not much more you can expect aside from that and then the little bit in the head. I do want to compare her to the transform element version. Now that's a legend scale 
But see, that's an up-and-coming company, and that is a company that has been doing some really good work. And I still want to say that this masterpiece does a better job. The Transform Element 1 uses parts forming. I mean, I, I don't really care about parts forming, but the reality is I got to go get my box out to get the parts if I want to put that thing in to alt mode, and I really don't want to mess with that. All right, so here she is compared to a lot of Beast Wars options. Um, most of the Masterpiece Beast Wars options that are out there right now. And here she is compared to Cheetor. So she's much smaller than Cheetor. Uh, way, way smaller than Dinobot and Megatron and Megatron. And uh, for the royalty! So she definitely condenses down a lot. But I think she looks good. I mean, she's a spider, so... How would a spider look if a spider was any bigger than this? So let's go ahead and get her transformed up. And we need to remove this little back piece here. So that wasn't good. We just undo this back piece and remove it. And at the same time, I guess I pulled that up uh, to remove it. It's a pretty simple transformation. And what you're going to notice is I'm not this piece off it's really only held in friction with the, with those two tabs so any movement can easily take that off we want to start with the legs as i always do so we're going to fold them down fold the legs down and we are going to close up the back pieces of the legs i guess i should do a whole leg at a time but there it goes and then we want to make this uh, knee joint level. That works. And then we're going to form the foot and we need to take out the heel spur. Notice I have my spudger ready to go. Okay, that didn't work. There it goes. Actually works to just uh, pull on that to get that. Heel spur out, and you know I like to do the legs first because the legs give it some room to stand. And then once she's standing, she's going to be easier to manipulate. So there we go with that. Now we need to work on the arms. So we're going to pull this piece down here, which sort of holds the hands in place. And then we're going to untab them a little bit, and we're going to move the arms and then next step here we're going to notice that we have her face all exposed we're going to need to fold that through all of this fold it through here like so so at this point we have her sort of like this we need to rotate this head around backwards and fold it down and then we're going to need to take the basically the back of her neck needs to collapse into the body like so and then her chest will tab into place then we have to come around here to the back piece get the legs out of the way and fold this back piece down and then we're going to arch it up so it just seems really tight but it goes down and then up and then this is going to tab into here like so there it goes bring that down okay so fold this around now I folded that up just kind of on mistake but that folds up there too squeeze these legs in and then press that up so that is pretty much everything you need to do to get her straightened up and looking good so we're gonna go over a little bit of aesthetic and articulation with her real fast and starting at the face she does have a really nice looking face she's got two alternates we're gonna show here in just a second but uh, looks really good looks the part the eyes almost look like they they're painted well but it almost looks like it would be a clear Kind of like a clear look to it, but it's not clear. It's a metallic look. And then she's got paint. She's got the, the 
Predacon symbol, not Decepticon symbol. Paint all over the chest there. All the way down. I think she's painted really well. Just looks really good. Just so much, so much everywhere. Just like her, her arm right here, down to her claw. Just really a nice looking figure. And probably it looks exactly the same as what I've seen with pictures and stuff of the Takara one. So looking at the back, she does clean up really well. They went out of her way to make sure she is nice and clean and she's got a really good aesthetic to her. Nice clean look, just all over. Just look at that. That is beautiful. So looking at the articulation, the head up and up and down, side to side, it works. She has double jointed el or shoulders, double jointed elbows. So she can do the 360 very easily. Uh, got the bicep swivel in there. Getting down in here to the claw, and it is, there's a lot of articulation with it in two different places in, I guess you could call that the elbow. And then we have articulation here, 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 and here. So like four places that the claw can articulate. So that's pretty good. A uh, little bit of a waist swivel to it. And I think that if you popped it up, you'd have a lot more. And you could just make her look taller if you wanted to, but you got kind of the bug some of the some of the transformation falls through but you could do that and get a lot more out of it same with the hips you can put them out and get everything you want or you just get a bit of a, a bit of a limit but i think that tucked in it looks better so got the thigh swivel right here we got the knee to the 90 and then the ankles do everything you'd want ankle pivot and tilt and all that great stuff get our weapon set up so we have to transform the weapon here like this and then fold some side pieces here down that one just doesn't want to fold for some reason and then we're going to plug the weapon into here and we have her launcher so to speak and then we're going to open up her hand and plug it in so it's set up to where you could plug it in on either hand so that's really good and it plugs into right here then we can close it up and we have her signature weapon, which does look good. Now, one of the things about this figure is that she does have kind of a, a gimmick from the show. She has multiple gimmicks from the show. Uh, in the show, her legs never fell off, though. That's, that's something I have to admit. They never fell off. But if you want to, you can get her armored up and you can set her up to flip this around. And she can have her machine gun legs, which would work. Let me get that set up for you. Okay, so here she is with her gun mode, kind of the, got the legs pointed out as if they're like machine guns and that whole part of the scene. Yeah, I don't know, if you watched, this, watched it, didn't you know what I'm talking about? But if you didn't watch it, I guess you didn't know what I'm talking about. She's packed in with these other two head sculpts, which I don't see the difference really so much in this one. But in this one, it's the green eyes and the just kind of got like a mean, angry look. She comes with this visor accessory that slips over her eyes and it's painted really well. It looks good. Get that zero in there. Got that green for the visor. It's reflective paint. Looks really nice. And it's got this wire that dangles down from it. So that's kind of a cool accessory or gimmick. And it came with the original too. And the original came with an extra wire in case you break yours or lose yours, but the wire kind of goes to nowhere, I guess. I don't really know where the wire is supposed to go. So I want to do a couple of comparisons so you can see, and here she is next to the Transform Element version, and a couple of things you're going to notice is the Transform Element version, of course it is uh, a lot cheaper, it, it was like half the price, I guess, of this, this gal here. But the other thing is that the legs don't move on the transform element, and I hear that they break off pretty easily. Mine hasn't broken off, so it's not an issue. But if you look at the overall aesthetic of these two, you'll see that the Masterpiece one does look a little bit more tune accurate. But this one here, they weigh about the same because this has die cast. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. This one is way lighter, but it does have die cast in it, which I do like, and I didn't feel any die cast in this figure. And coincidentally, they still both look great, but let's bring Prime in. Everybody is sick of hearing me say this, but I'm going to say it again that 
people discuss that the true masterpiece scale is what Transform Element is doing because when you see the episode where they actually uh, try to destroy Optimus Prime's face or whatever, uh, spoiler alert, that whole situation that's going on, this is more of the correct size compared to that. So depending on how you look at it and how you look at it, that's all up to you. But Transform Element is doing this and that really makes a lot of sense. And here she is with all of her friends, where she's going to spend the rest of her days. Or oh, maybe. I'll probably have to rearrange this and get a bigger shelf eventually. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the KO version of the MP46 Black Widow or Black Arachnia. A one-to-one -one copy of Takara, if not actually Takara. And this thing does look good. It fits the bill. I don't have a problem with the spider mode. I think it... It's good for what it is. The bot mode is almost perfect in almost every way. Uh, the legs pop off, but I'd rather them pop off than break. And yes, this is an unassisted one leg stand. She's pulling it off. You know, we got the idea from Firebirds. Nice that it's coming up. You can get yours at Showzy. I'll have a link down below. It's only like 65 bucks. And yes, I checked the price before I said it. Like, subscribe, turn your finger out.